So hi, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by. And thank you for those of you who are tuning in on Facebook Live. Um, I'm Lindsay M. Waldrop. We're here at the Crossville booth at Coverings 2018. And we're going to be talking some more about Bold Blends. It's a series that we started earlier this year where we talked to today's hottest designers about how they blend design trends. So with us here is Michelle Workman. Who? Hello. She hails to us from Chattanooga and LA and has a really, really unique design sensibility that harkens some heritage as well as completely modern. And then next to her, we have Denise McGehe coming. Good morning. She comes to us from Dallas. Um, their choices are amazing. They've worked with our product at several show houses and they are anything but boring. So let's get started. Now, Michelle. You're known for glamorous, iconic design with a touch of femininity. How do you blend hard surfacing materials like tile into your spaces? Uh, I think a blend really needs to come from balance. So if you're doing something hard, then you need to find something soft to balance it. So if I'm doing a floor that's like this, um, and maybe I don't want to cover it with a rug, I will do really beautiful full drapes. I love that. I love how you're bringing in other materials to do that. Now, Denise, your tagline is design on a deadline, but your look is never out of the box. Um, tell us about your signature blend of styles and how you accomplish these super high-end looks very quickly. You know, I think it's important for us to identify manufacturers and suppliers that have products that can be sourced and selected on a timeline so we actually look for partners that have products that we can get quickly and um, it's really as much about design style as it is availability for us well since we are in the crossville booth i do have to give our brand a quick plug and talk about how we manufacture in the united states how we stock these panels that are all the rage now in the ceramics industry over 60 SKUs in tennessee so you know, we help all designers meet that with availability, and that's it's a critical in a partner relationship. It is, and I think um, you, you're going to talk about show houses later, but show houses are very similar to what we do on a daily basis because we design with a deadline, and so having partners like Crossville is key to getting the job done. Great, thanks. Um, both of these ladies have product collections, and I think that that's really interesting when we go beyond uh, design of a space and the design of what goes in the space. Now, Michelle, you work with French Heritage and PR and Company. And Denise, you've got Curry and Company Design Legacy and Materials Marketing lines. Tell us about your inspiration for your product design work and where you blend tradition and current ideas and kind of the process and how it might be a little different than when you're designing a space. For me, the way I design a space is I'm designing for the client. I'm designing who they are, and I'm trying to showcase that in their home. And designing a collection was much more about who I am. So I thought that was kind of difficult to wrap my mind about doing something for myself, essentially, and what is my aesthetic versus other people. So um, I'm big on mixing. So I tried to have a common thread throughout each collection, but make it so that the pieces could mix and match with other things and not be one look. And for me, um, the product lines that I've developed, the fabric and wallpaper, the tile, and then the custom mantles, actually came out of working on my own projects and not being able to find what it was that I was looking for. So um, we custom designed a lot of these pieces over the past, I've been in business almost 20 years, and they've been things that we've gone to, that we've designed and had made by manufacturers. And there was a hole either in the industry or in the lines that we work with that do have product available. Um, and so bringing those already to the table, we'd already designed them, was the way that our product designs came about. They really fit a need that we had in our projects. That's Amazing, and I love how diverse you both are with your creativity. Um, when you're designing the products, that's such a bold statement, but you put yourself out there all the time, your thoughts, expressing your clients' thoughts. Tell me what the biggest risk you ever took on a design project was and what you learned from it. You go. Okay. <laughs> so um, 
show houses are an opportunity for us to really step out of the box and, and show something unique. And you want something that's memorable, um, that is probably ahead of the curve from a trend perspective because we like to be known for setting the trends, not following them necessarily. And um, the first show house I did was a small show house in Dallas at the State Fair of Texas. And it was in a tent. And I decided I wanted to use a yellow range and design a kitchen around it. Um, yellow wasn't really on the scene about eight years ago when I did that. But and it is now. It is now. Um, and so we combined yellow and gray, and I also um, designed uh, my own custom chevron pattern on the tile with white and gray tiles. So that was probably the biggest risk that I took. And it's really fun when you're a designer and you stand in a show house and the people don't know you've designed it but they come through and offer a commentary with their spouse or their mom. And, and there were either people that loved the yellow range or people that thought I was absolutely insane. And I love waiting until the very end of their commentary to introduce <laughs> myself as the designer. It's always really fun for them to know who the insane person was that put a yellow range in the kitchen. But that was probably my most bold step. And after that, it was really easy to make more as we went. You got comfortable I with got the comfortable rest. comfortable being me. Yes. Well, my gosh. Uh, you do have to have thick skin as a designer, not just in a show house, but with clients, too, who question, True. you know, the size of things or um, does that really go together or not? And we do and get that a lot. We do, constantly. Uh, and, and it doesn't matter how big you are as a designer or how well-known or what great respect your client has for you, they still will question most of your decisions that don't fit in a box for them, which is our job, is to push them a little bit outside their comfort zone, I think. And um, I think one of the biggest risks I took was also a, a show house, because it is, it's our, it's our design lab, and our own homes are our design lab as well. And so that's, that's the other area to, to take risks on. And... Um, I did, I had a, an artist come in, it was a show house here in Atlanta, I had an artist come in and he, it was Steve McKenzie and he did these huge gold circles on the walls. Oh, I remember that one. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it ended up being gorgeous, but like, like Denise, I stood in the room and listened to people critique the busyness of the room and, you know, it, it doesn't bother me because I don't, I don't care what other people think. So how does that translate, though, into social media? When you did your kitchen eight years ago, people weren't commenting on every little thing. And when you do these houses or you do spaces that have been published, other people can't actually see the details. They're not walking through it. That's true. So tell us a little bit about your, uh, this is not on the question list, by the way, but your approach to uh, social media and the thick skin, because you both put your work out there and you both put yourselves out there a lot. You know, I, I think that I've heard celebrities say this, and I think it applies to us. Don't read the comments. You, it, it really doesn't matter what other people think or say about your design work. You know that you're an established designer. You know that have you have clients that love your work. You've been published. There's a need for what we do, and being different is the key. That's right. You have to, we're here to elevate, you know, and, and you have to be willing to mix it up and be different and stand out. You can't be a, a wallflower and be successful. That's amazing to hear. And what's also, I think, interesting is how homeowners, whether they're working with a designer or working independently and with a retailer, are willing to take more risks because of the work that they've seen. I just did a panel discussion upstairs on tile trends. And one of the discussions was, you know, with a product that people oftentimes think, I'm going to live with this for 20 years, 30 years, in my house till the day I die, um, you know, how do we sell some of the trends? And one of the things that I think is interesting is that now people are like, you know what, I love royal blue. I'm going to put royal blue in my kitchen, and I'm going to be happy with it until I'm not happy with it anymore. Exactly. Nothing is as permanent as we may think. You could replace the yellow fridge or step range when, if you decided... I don't like yellow anymore so I think I think it's important to have that for everyone to have that confidence well and from a real estate perspective trends come and go and you want to make sure that your home is updated and you never know when you're gonna put it on the market you never know when you're going to sell it and I really think I really think that that if you can 
if you cannot worry about having to replace it eight to ten years down the road, you're going to want to update your space anyway. So be, being in love with it from day one and not feeling like it's plain or bland or vanilla I, it makes you happy. Well, people, generally speaking, are much more interesting than you know, their house shows them to be. So many people are into this sort of gray and beige and neutral, and I don't want to stand out, you know. And the thing is, is in, in their personal life, they aren't gray, vanilla, beige. They are vibrant and alive and interesting and quirky and crazy and kooky and all those things. And you have to have some of that in your home or it's not who you are. It's a lie. <laughs> I love that. I think sometimes people try and project who they'd like to be through their spaces versus who they are, but I think that's also changing. Um, so let's, let's go into tile for a little bit since we are at Coverings. It's the place for American designers such as yourself to see tile and stonelets from around the world. What are some of the new looks that you love, and what are some tile looks that you wish would make a comeback since some of you, you do a little historic reference from time to time? Well, um, for me, what I've been seeing that I'm – really super into at this show is um, the three-dimensionality of tile because we think of tile as flat and there have been so many incredibly beautifully carved surfaces and not carved but um, cast surfaces that are three-dimensional and it's amazing and beautiful and it's making my mind go oh I could use that there oh I could put that there that's basically an art installation it's not a wall you know so um, that's one of the things that I've been loving seeing here. And uh, one of the things I'd love to see come back, which is sort of very much about who I am and where I grew up, is um, just plain old porcelain tile from the 20s that were 4x4 four four squares, and they, but they were wild colors, like vibrant lilac and celadon green, and, but mixing those together. And that's the tile that I grew up you know, seeing in bathrooms in Los Angeles from these homes that were built in the 20s. And in many ways, I'm the same as Michelle. Um, texture and tile is really important to me. We're doing so many of these huge glass showers that you see through, and it is an art installation in many ways. That's the view that you have. So I'm all about hiding all your crap in the shower. Like, I don't want to see that in a built-in niche on the wall. I want it hidden and I tucked hate away. And I want texture or art or some beautiful display of a pattern or you know something on the vertical surface and then I'm all about let's bring back the pink bath I mean I really think yes. that we could add color back into our tile and make it really chic and current and now and I'm I'm ready to do that I, I love a pink tub well, in the presentation I was just up in, you will be happy to know that we um, six by six squares are coming back, and there's even a touch of the four by four. We love All that. Right. So that's a good thing. Well, we reference show houses, and uh, at Crossville, we do have a partnership with Traditional Home Magazine. We do several of their show houses as well as sponsor some local show houses in other areas. You both worked with us um, on these houses. Tell us about your tile selection process and some of your thoughts that go through, um, other than availability, some of, your, some of the things that go through your mind when you're picking out these tiles for these projects. Well, for me, um, I start the process with color. So I determine what my palette's going to be as my very first step. And from there, I then go, well, what will work? And for me, tile on the floor, tile on a wall, it creates a background for whatever painting I'm going to make in that space and um, so sometimes I need something with color sometimes I need something that's neutral and the Dallas show house I went neutral because I was doing a much brighter um, color palette in there so I needed the tile to to ground the space and set the tone for you know that light and airiness it needed to be a little bit more sedate and grounded by the way, if you want to see that space that Michelle did in Dallas, it's in this month's traditional home. And they just, in the last couple of days, posted a story, uh, traditionalhome.com, on the house. So you can see that fantastic space. And I've actually done spaces that had tile on the last three traditional home show houses I've done. One in New Orleans that we did with you, where I'd used a black mosaic on the floor. Um, then I went to Dallas, and we did the bar and the bathroom with you. Um, I did a mosaic there. Which was beautiful. Thank you. And we did ice blue against your mosaic marble. 
and then Savannah. And the Savannah show house was really interesting because the room we did was in the basement and there were multiple levels um, up to that. Do you remember the, the floor? And what was so great about the product that we chose with you is that we were able to transition those different levels based on how the tile was made. And it was so seamless and beautiful and it actually looked like it was meant to be that way. So um, you guys have always been great to work with and, and full of solutions. So thank you. That's Absolutely. The, solution oriented. That's really one of the things that we pride ourselves on. And in that house, the, the Savannah house, it was the basement. The floor was not level as you moved through the basement. Denise had the front room. It was a den. And it was almost like an uneven ramp as it led to the back of the house. And so by using a marble mosaic we were that was mesh mounted, we were able to have that flex as we went up the space and keep the floor consistent without having to make any transitions. And and if you didn't point it out, no one would have even known. It was really it was really very subtle and um there's so many behind the scenes stories like that that we see that um a lot of people wouldn't even know um was a challenge for us in the beginning. Well, and I think that's one of the things that people love to hear about. So we're going to talk about some behind the scenes stories because, you know, we all watch various and sundry programs. We see the beautiful spaces in the magazine. Show houses are a unique situation because the time is incredibly tight from the time that you are able to get into the space to the time that there is a gala black tie opening. And it's all very glamorous for everyone except the designer who has probably 20 minutes before putting on a cocktail dress been yeah. rearranging their space. So t share a couple of behind the scenes from some of these fab houses. Well, um, I'll, I'll use the Dallas show house. It had an odd address. I don't know, you probably didn't have to ship much there, but I had to ship everything there because I'm living here. And um, so we shipped all these things and as I was opening the boxes, I was finding many things broken. So the vintage lamps that were these amazing overscale, you know, uh, lamps that were three feet tall, one was just broken. And I almost cried. <laughs> but um, I got some, some uh, what's the, the Bondo glue stuff and that big old thing in the back and then looks pretty for the picture which in, in the case of a show house, you can get away with. In a, someone's actual home, you wouldn't be able to do that, but it was, it was workable. But again, you only have that one day to install everything. And, um, and, and the other thing that happened was we lost um, several pieces of art, didn't make it there. I, I still don't know where some of the art is that I had ordered. And um, Random act of FedEx? Yes. FedEx had a very difficult time finding the location, even though they'd been there multiple times. <laughs> so those are my stories. Otherwise, it went off without a hitch, actually. I find that show houses can be like that because you don't, you're not dealing with a lot of the things that you're dealing with when you're doing someone's home. So there's nobody living there usually, and you can just get in, get out, have things done. It's usually pretty... You don't have to hold hands or perform no. homeowner therapy at any That's any right. Moment. That's right. I think for, I have a story for every single show house, <laughs> and it seems like I get these really large rooms. But um, installation of a show house is probably the most challenging because you're in line behind other designers along the way in their rooms, and often you can't get in or your people are there to deliver and there's no room for a truck to unload or someone gets lost or... Art gets lost. And I did a show house in the Hamptons, and that happened to us. We, the art showed up six months later back to the artist that had shipped it to us. But she painted a new one and immediately sent it overnight and packed it to where the paint was even still wet. But um, it showed up, and she told me what to do if it got damaged. And people are great in show houses. The, the, the big winner for us is that we work with so many great manufacturers, and they're willing to bend over backwards to get things to you and to donate, you know, their products so that you can put it in your space and realize your vision. And they're really great about finding solutions again. And um, I put wallpaper in all of my show house rooms, either on the ceiling or on the walls, and um, that never has gone off correctly, ever. <laughs> There's always been an issue, either we're short or the installer had a heart attack 
or someone fell off a ladder. And so wallpaper for me tends to be the kiss of death and we just accept that it's not going to go right and know that going in. But you do it anyway. We get it. I do it because I think it's so impactful. And gorgeous, and being beautiful. able to take a risk like that, you know, and 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 put it in. And and we have to remediate the room and take it back to what it was before so the takedown process can be equally as harrowing because you have to remove the wallpaper and smooth the walls and paint them a certain color and and if it hasn't gone in correctly then you've got a lot of work to do on the back end people don't know that but you often have to take the room back to a white box wow well we have a little bit of a show house happening here in Coverington that there's a tiny house installation going on that Crossville's doing with Jay and our tile so if you are here um, take a chance to walk by and see that because that crew basically has four days to tile and set up and get an entire tiny house done. So that is oh, that's cool. It's very cool. And what I love about it is when you do a trade show, there's so much waste. These houses are actually um, are then sold, and so someone gets to live in them. So that's very very cool. Very what, cool. What products are you using in there? There is laminum. And there is some glass, um, and I know that they fabricated some countertops out of the, the laminum panels. Oh, okay. great. And I have not even walked back there to see them. I'm going to do that right after this discussion. So, um, so exciting stuff. Now, you guys have both chosen to use Crossville in your own home. Yes. Which is pretty awesome. Um, now, you considered using the panels. You actually, yours is installed. Yours we are um, working on right now. These are not traditional products, anything no. but. Tell us a, about your decision on why you were thinking of, of going there and, and, why, and why you did. Well, you know, you can do lots of different things with tile. And I've certainly done a ton of pattern with tile because that's sort of your traditional idea of tile is pattern. And with the laminam, large-scale panels, you get the uh, functionality of tile with the beauty of something really just single it's it's kind of incredible and I love that idea it's a it's a very modern take to me on tile and it, it's similar to using slab you know if you're gonna do a slabbed uh, shower and um, except instead of doing a marble finish you we, you know I use the Fila mm -hmm. and that's got almost a metallic feel to it and it has just the barest little shimmer and so an incredible product and and I was a little obsessed with it I have to say <laughs> so that's in my bathroom <laughs> well I know and with Denise um, you've used black marble with us so many times and when I was looking at, at what you were considering I was like there's a lot of white going on in here it really is and and if you want to follow along on my bath it, the hashtag is McGahey makeover and so we're we're giving updates on my insta stories and we'll do a huge reveal um, in the end Black and white was the theme for my, my bath remodel. With There'll be color in there, don't worry. Um, but I'm keeping that under wraps for now. Um, but from a black and white perspective, I am still using some black marble in there. But the white was um, because grout. I mean, that's the answer right there when you ask why I would use a large format. Um, the less grout that I have, and I have, I have four dogs and a husband and kids. And, less and to clean. White really makes me nervous sometimes because of my lifestyle and how we live in our home and so the larger format allows us to use less grout obviously and have a more uniform beautiful space it also when you're using the product like I am the state of grace with the veining um you really get to see the veining beautifully in larger pieces and larger format and again like I was talking about with an art installation of tile that beautiful beautiful look is is what I'm wanting and, and going for and timeless is also something that we were looking for. We plan to be in our house another 10 to 15 years. And I was looking for something timeless. And then I can change out my cabinet colors or I can change out the lighting in there different than the large format tile we're using on the floor and in the shower. Fantastic. We're probably going to do case studies on both of these projects. So follow along. They both have social media accounts. Uh, but... Also, look for those case studies online after the projects are completed. So you've done your own houses. You've done everybody else's houses. Um, but homeowners are constantly DIYing. Um, do you have any do's and don'ts for individuals working with their retailers or installers in the selection process? 
Don't. <laughs> hire a designer. We oh. do say hire a designer, and, and I'm, I'm going to answer that question in both ways. The first is designers are not as expensive or as, as much imagine. of a luxury as people might imagine. And you can definitely, a, a lot of the tile stores have in-house design, or they have someone that has a lot of experience. Work with a professional, and installers are also very talented at helping you understand what the finished product's going to look like. Rely on them to help give you a vision. I do say hire a designer because we're going to really give you something unique and bold and different. Um, but and, and in the end, I think you save money. Absolutely, because the, it is an investment, and you want to make sure you're not making a mistake. Um, and often what I do as a designer is we're just helping people visualize what that's going to look like in the end. And, and a lot of people will come to me and work with our firm and say, I just don't have a vision. I can't see it. And, and we're great at that. It's almost a disease. No, we, we, we're fortune tellers. I mean, that is what we are. We, we're building something in your space that isn't there, and we can see it before it's there. And that's what we do. We predict. And, and in many ways, when you're, let, let's say you're going to a retailer to purchase tile, ask for install photos of that product. Manufacturers will provide it. You'll see a room that has it installed. It is important for you to visualize what you're putting in because that small sample and what the end result looks like in the end can be very Two different. Two very different things. That's a really good tip. So we're getting near the end of our discussion. As trend spotters, what are some of the up-and-coming trends you see for people that they should consider to boldly blend into their current interiors just to keep things fresh? Um, I definitely think using some of the three-dimensional tile is a must um, and definitely a bold statement and something that could be done with any color, lack of color, uh, modern, traditional, you could, you could use it anywhere. I mean, it's some beautiful stuff. And I'm, I'm always going to say be bold with color, be bold and step out there. Even if it's a backsplash, people are like, Oh, my God, that's so hard to replace. It's not. It, no, it it's, isn't. And, it's really and not. The living with things forever. It's a uh, two-day job. Yeah. In and out. Especially with backsplashes and things like that, take chances. Take it, a you risk. Will, you will be happier with it. For sure. Um, so the last question, whether it's a trend, an event, a launch, uh, for, for either of you, um, what are you most excited about for design in the next six to 12 months? What's got you really pumped up in your magic, you know, eight ball? Uh, I'm developing a line of wallpaper, and that's got me very creative right now. So in, in, in a different way than I usually am. When, when will we see that? Soon, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we, are, uh, we are having some strike-offs come in now. And um, I just wallpapered one wall in my bedroom with, um, with a wallpaper that was a strike off. I was like, oh, there's enough here to do a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I'm waiting for the next strike off. And hopefully that's going into a client's dining room. So she'll have the first, you know, version of that chinoiserie that we're doing, which is very exciting. So for me, it's wallpaper right now. Awesome. Yeah. What about you, Denise? And for us, um, we're doing lighting and furnishings with Curry & Company in the fall, and I'm really excited to show that entire collection. It is not just a lighting collection, which I, I know they do wonderful lighting, but we're doing some case good pieces. We're doing a little bit of outdoor, and, and it's really going to be a little bit more expanded than what Curry has done with licensees in the past, and I'm really excited to bring it all to fruition. I want to see the outdoor. It's pretty great. They make great Are we going to see this in High Point in the fall? You will, in October, in the yeah, fall, okay. yes. Great. Yes, so yeah. um, we're, we're, you may see a few sneak peeks here and there in September, but the big launch is in October. That's awesome. Sounds like I need to make a road trip. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Denise McGahey and Michelle Workman, for coming here and spending time with Crossville. Um, I want to thank everybody who stopped by and everybody that's watching either live or checks out the YouTube video later. Um, I hope this gave you some inspiration here from Coverings. And for those of you that couldn't make it, we hope to see you at the next trade show soon. Have a great day.